There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, aboran, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, bromine, lithium, beryllium, and barium. If I were to ask you, what do you see in this picture? Well, you might say, I see a bit of the sky, and some farmland as well. And that would be pretty much accurate, because you can see some soil, some farmland, and some sky. But if I were to ask you, what is in that sky, so what is the sky made up of, and what kind of layers are there in that, in that sky itself, and that's sort of a trickier question. So for example, we have not just one layer, but we have sort of multiple layers that we categorize our actual sky. So this sky we also usually refer to as the atmosphere. So there's different layers, and within those layers, we have either different types of chemicals inside, so the air itself is, for example, nitrogen, oxygen, and carbon dioxide, and a couple other gases. And so we have different types of gases inside these different layers, or at least different amounts of those gases. And also we have different types of pressure, different types of temperature. So the reason why I mention all this is because the dot point itself says describe the composition and layer structure of the atmosphere. So the atmosphere in this case would be basically more or less all the sky that you can see, and even further beyond that sky that you can see, and almost into space itself. But we have to talk about the composition, so what kind of chemicals, what kind of gases are inside the atmosphere, and in different layers of the atmosphere, and we have to talk about the names of those layers, and what's unique about those layers as well. All right, so I'll start with the first being the composition. So this refers to the composition, so describe the composition. The composition is, in this case refers to what type of gases, what type of gases can we find, but what type of gases, and also sort of how much, so percentage, so how much of the atmosphere is made up by these different types of gases. So first we've got these, the atmosphere here, this is our soil, so this might be sea level, so it'd be sea level, or just above, this is obviously just normal soil. And above it, we have these different layers. This is our atmosphere here. And the first layer, the one which basically 75% of the mass of all gases is inside, is called the troposphere. So the troposphere has, as you can see here, this is the troposphere, this, this one here. And the troposphere has the vast majority of gases inside of it, more than 75% in terms of weight. So that's the first thing you should know. You should know that the troposphere, which is basically the atmosphere that is most closest to us, and it starts at zero kilometers, so it starts at sea level, and goes all the way to about 15 kilometers, 12 to 15 kilometers, and that's your actual troposphere. We have high pressure, about 100 kilopascal. The reason why is because we have so many different types of gases in that space. Right? So lots of, lots of gases means lots of bumping into each other, and that means high pressure. So the troposphere has about 75% of all the gases, the molecules, from in the atmosphere. It also has the highest pressure at about 100 kilopascal. And the actual troposphere ends about 15 kilometers. After about 15 kilometers, starts the next layer. Right, so the first layer is called the troposphere. The second layer is called the stratosphere. Stratosphere. And this here. So all of this here is the stratosphere. And it starts about 15 kilometers, goes up all the way roughly to 50 kilometers. Now you can already tell there's less molecules, so these red and blue dots, there are less molecules in the stratosphere than there are in the troposphere. But together, the stratosphere and the, the, um, the troposphere and the stratosphere together have roughly 99% of all molecules. So those two together have about 99%. And the troposphere by itself has about 75%. So the rest of it would be in the other two layers, the mesosphere, which is the one next to it, and the thermosphere. But overall, these two layers have very little in terms of gases. The vast majority are in the first two layers. Another thing you should know is that within the strat stratosphere, we have the ozone layer, which is right here. Right? So it's about 20 kilometers up is the, is the ozone layer. And we're going to talk about the ozone layer a lot more in the future. But you should just know that the ozone layer is in the stratosphere. Right? And that the pressure in the stratosphere 
is less than in the troposphere, so we've got about 10 kilopascal in the stratosphere, as opposed to 100 kilopascal in the troposphere. And the reason why is because the amount of molecules in the stratosphere is less than the amount of molecules in the troposphere, and thereby the pressure is also less. And if you go into, for example, the next layer, we mentioned the next layer, which goes from about 50 kilometers to 85 kilometers, it's called the mesosphere. And that pressure there is about 0.1 kilopascal, which is very low compared to the other ones. And the layer above it, which is the thermosphere. And the thermosphere takes us all the way to space. So once the thermosphere ends, space kind of starts. And the pressure there is also 0 0.1, 0 0.01 kilopascal. So the pressure in both those upper layers is the same, but it's very, very low compared to the other ones. And the reason why is because there's so few molecules in there. That's the first thing you should know. You should know those names. You should know the sequence they come in. The troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. You should know that the one which is closest to us, and the one that is probably the most important in general, is, is the troposphere, because it has all of our molecules in it, lots of our gases in it. High pressure, high amounts of molecules. Next one is also important, the stratosphere. I mean, they're all important, but these are just, for us, important. The stratosphere, that has a few less molecules, but it also has the ozone layer, which we need to know about because the ozone layer is really vital for our survival. And both those first two layers have about 99% of the actual gases. And we need to know the composition. We need to know a bit more than just that. We also need to know what kind of gases are inside those different layers. And the main ones, so these first three that I mentioned are the main ones. There are more, but these are the main ones. So the argon, sorry, the nitrogen has, so these red dots are the nitrogen. There's about 78% nitrogen inside the air itself. Then we've got about 21, so 20.9% 20 being oxygen, right? So you can see those blue dots here, these are oxygen. So for every, roughly for every five nitrogen, there's one oxygen. And then argon is the next largest amount. Argon is a noble gas, doesn't really do much, but there's only about less than 1% of argon. So you can see that for nitrogen and oxygen almost make up 99% of all the gases in the atmosphere. And then argon is next at, at a bit less than 1%. And the remaining, which is very little in terms of actual percentage, are, these are not all of them, but the ones that I'm going to go cover here are just some of the most important ones you should know about. Carbon dioxide being 0.037%. So that's a tiny percentage compared to the other ones. Methane being 0.0016 percent, carbon monoxide being 0.0001 percent, and ozone being 0.0000002 percent. So you can t tell by those numbers that the vast majority of molecules will be nitrogen and, and oxygen, right? And almost 99 percent of all the molecules in the atmosphere. Argon makes up a bit less than 1 percent, and the remaining bits make up, all up, make up less than 1 percent, right? So carbon dioxide make up 0.037 Ethane even less, etc., etc. And what you should also know is that, for example, in the troposphere, the composition, so the percentage composition, is going to be very similar in the troposphere than it is going to be in the stratosphere or even in the mesosphere. The only difference is the amount of molecules, right? So here we have, let's say here we have 25 nitrogen molecules in the troposphere, and let's say we have five molecules of oxygen. If that were the case, then in the stratosphere, we would still have that same ratio, but we would have less. So in this case, we might have, let's say we have 25 nitrogen here, then we would have 5 nitrogen here. So we have, we had 5 oxygen here, and to keep that ratio the same, we would have 1 oxygen in the stratosphere. So overall, the percentages are roughly the same for all different types of layers of the atmosphere. The only difference being the amounts that we can find in it. Right, so the troposphere have the vast majority of it. Then comes the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. But the most important part you should know is that the overall the percentage composition in each layer is roughly the same. Roughly the 78% nitrogen, 20.9% oxygen, and then a bit of argon, and the rest is very small percentages. That's all what you should know for the composition. And we even cover most of the other part, which is talking about the layered structure. And for the other part, layer structure, you should know that the, we need to know about the troposphere. Again, the troposphere is all of this part here. So we've got you know, the mountains, even Mount Everest is still in the troposphere. So that's how high it goes. Mount Everest is roughly 10 kilometers high, so it goes a bit higher. 
we have our most of our clouds are in the troposphere if you have your sort of normal planes that fly so your, your fun planes the ones you do for a hobby or your balloons they would all be in the troposphere and even some of your commercial jets they would be on the borderline to the stratosphere but as you can tell basically the majority of stuff that we have is in the troposphere then the stratosphere is the next one there we have the ozone layer and some of the commercial jets fly there the ozone layer being really important in the stratosphere and if we go above that we have you know spacecraft and other sort of sort of spacey things but the vast majority of stuff that we have we need to know about in terms of human function happens in the troposphere but what you also should realize is the temperature so temperature is highest on the below, lowest area of the troposphere right here so this is temperature here so you can see this red line is temperature and the temperature is the lo lowest here but then it goes sorry the highest here so highest at sea level and as you increase your altitude as you increase the height it's going to go down so it's going to get colder 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 and then all of a sudden there is a sort of increase an increase in temperature so you can see here and that increase in temperature is actually at your ozone and the reason why is because sun will hit that ozone sun hits the ozone layer and if you in case you might have heard this before but the, the ozone layer itself absorbs UV, UV radiation and when it absorbs UV radiation it basically absorbs heat so thereby at the ozone layer it heats up a bit because the, the ozone itself absorbs your heat and thereby a temperature increases again in the ozone sorry yeah close to the ozone layer which is in the stratosphere and once we enter the mesosphere it gets colder again and last but not least we're in the thermosphere the thermosphere is where a lot of radiation is absorbed so lots of really powerful radiation which is why the temperature basically goes really high there are very few particles there which is why it's hard to measure temperature because there's very few particles but overall it's extremely hot there just because the particles that are there do absorb high amounts of radiation but, I mean this is a really side story not the main important parts what you should get out of this video is you should know that there are these four layers the troposphere the stratosphere the mesosphere the thermosphere you should know that the troposphere is where most of you know, the daily living takes place our clouds are there mountains are still in the troposphere most of our planes fly there you should also know the gases that are there which is such as argon and nitrogen oxygen but also the composition so roughly 78 percent nitrogen 20.9% oxygen, 0.9% argon, etc., etc. What you should also know is that the ozone layer is in the stratosphere. The actual chemicals, the sort of the molecules found in the stratosphere, are very similar to the troposphere in terms of the percentage composition. The only difference being the actual amount. We have more in the troposphere than we do have in the stratosphere. And the same thing with the stratosphere compared to the mesosphere. So we have more here than we do in the next layer and so on and so forth which is why there's highest pressure in the lowest layer second highest pressure in the second layer and then it decreases afterwards as well what you should know as well is you should know that we have very low percentage composition of these other gases such as carbon dioxide methane carbon monoxide and ozone but we'll find out soon is that even though there's low amounts of these that doesn't mean that they're not important because they are these in these cases carbon dioxide methane carbon monoxide and ozone these are actually pollutants or they can be pollutants so even though they have low amounts they're still important but yeah that's the main thing you should know from this video the composition of the atmosphere and the layer structure of the atmosphere i hope that was useful thank you for watching